Hi guys, I have something super fun and easy to do today. We're going to make no sew pouches with faux leather from 651vinyl.com. You can make large, small, or medium pouches depending on what you want to hold. I have two small business card pouches and two larger pouches that can be used to hold notepads, pencils, personal items, whatever you want to do. Let's check these out. So we have a few different colors here that were sent to me from 651vinyl.com. They do have a total of 24 colors right now. I imagine if they're popular, they will add more colors in the future. We have this neat leather. We have a holographic, which is a lot of fun. Look at that color throw. Then we have a black. It's got kind of an embossed pattern on it. It's got a nice, neat texture to it. This is probably one of my favorites out of the batch. Then we have this metalized looking pattern with stars on it. It's a lot of fun, nice and soft on the back. And then we have these two pearl colors. There's a blue and a pink, and those are really cool as well. So I have these two that I've already done. I did a small business card pouch and a medium sized pouch. You just pull the flap off of the button and then you can store your items inside the pouch and then close it up, press it over the button and you're good to go. And then the smaller one, this one is sized to hold business cards. You could use it for your ID, credit cards, shopper cards, whatever you want. So those are really cool. So let's talk about what we're going to need for this project. You're going to need a really sticky mat. This one's pretty new. I've only used it for leather so far. You're going to want a brayer. I'll show you how to use that later on. And then you're going to need round head button studs that screw on. I'll drop a link down below to everything I see here. And I'll show you what those are. And this is a punch so that we can punch the holes in the leather for the uh, button head studs. A screwdriver and some binder clips. I'll show you what those are for in a little bit. It'll help hold it together while we assemble. And then you're going to want an X-Acto knife and a cutting mat. So these are the items that you're going to need. And let's get everything out of the way and start on our first project. So you want to line up your leather with your mat. Again, you need a really sticky mat. I'm just going to line this up across the top. Get it nice and straight across the top. Smooth it down. Make sure it's lined up on your left hand side as well. And then we're going to grab our brayer and we're going to press down. This is just going to help ensure that your faux leather is going to stick to your mat and not shift around while you're trying to cut it. This is really good also when your mat's not so sticky and you're trying to get your vinyl or cardstock to stick. Just run over it with a brayer and it helps it stay. You can see it's not coming off, no loose corners or anything like that. And let's get it loaded in the machine. Okay, so now we're at the computer and here's my design for the business card size. And I've already got it sized how I want it. I'm gonna to go to the send panel and there's not really a setting for the faux vinyl. So I just pick something that's kind of close. Um, we're gonna pick the leatherette, but the settings still aren't quite right. I'm gonna show you how I set my own settings and do a test cut. So I want it on auto cut with the auto blade, make sure it's set to cut. And I'm going to turn my blade depth up to nine, my pressure to 20, got my speed at three, and we're gonna do two passes, and I'm gonna send a test cut to the machine. It's very important that you always test your cuts. That way you're not wasting material, things like that. You can do a test cut. It's just gonna cut a square and a triangle out. We're gonna unload it from the machine and test that little cut and see how it does. Now you'll see here that my uh, cut didn't cut super clean on the side. I kind of had to tear it and we don't want that. So we're going to lay or we're going to put our vinyl back of the machine. I'm going to increase the force a little bit and we'll cut again. So let's go uh, move this test cut. You can see I'm using the arrows to move the position of my test cut. We're going to go back to the computer. 
I'm going to increase my force to 23 and I'm going to test it again. So we're going to go back to the machine. You'll see it'll cut where I told it to cut that second time. We'll kick it out and test the cut again. Just pull this out. A little bit of a tug right there, um, but I think we're going to be good to go. I've done quite a few test cuts on my Cameo 3. I was cutting with a ratchet blade, blade depth of 9, force of 10. And that was cutting fine on my Cameo 4. I've had to increase it a little bit up to 23. Every machine is a little bit different. you got to find that sweet spot. So definitely do your test cuts and make sure that you're getting the right cut for your machine. You can even save those cuts into your software and put on there, you know, 651 vinyl uh, faux leather, and it'll save that cut setting in there. So we've done our cut. And before I unload it, I always test my cut. That way, if it didn't cut all the way through, I can go back to the computer and send it again. But we had a nice clean cut, so we're gonna kick it out and pull it off of our mat. And you can see how nice and clean that cuts. So these are super easy to do. We're just gonna flip it over and we're gonna fold it like we're making an envelope. Just gonna fold these in. The um, button's gonna hold it together, so you don't need to crease it really hard. I'll show you on the second one how you can kind of fold it down, use something to fold it down if you want. But again, that button's gonna hold it in place, so it's not a big deal. So we're gonna fold these down. I'm gonna grab the binder clips and that's just gonna keep it together so I don't have to hold it the whole time. And then I'm gonna fold the top down and put a little crease right there. It doesn't really crease it, but it does help it start to take shape. Then I'm gonna take my punch and I'm just going to punch a hole. This one took a little bit of force. I had to use both hands, twist it to make sure it went all the way through. And you can see. And then we're going to grab a pen and I'm going to mark through the hole the spot where that one is. Be careful not to get any pen marks on the top because that won't be hidden. Got a little mark there. You can see nothing crazy. I'm going to grab our button punch again. And I'm using an old button punch that we had in our workshop using for leather. I recommend if you're going to buy something new, check out the Cropodile from We Are Memory Keepers. It's got several different size punches. It also allows you to do rivets, and so I'll drop a link to that as well. This punch is probably 20 years old. I don't know where you would get one, maybe a leatherworking store or a woodworking store or something. So my punch went through all three layers. I'm going to take it apart. Then I'm going to grab one of these, and the kit that I got came with four different colors. So I'm going to pick a kind of an antique bronze, get a top piece and a bottom piece. This kit also came with a black, a silver, and a gold. And so I'm going to start with the first piece and you kind of want to just push it through the hole. The hole's a little bit smaller than the pin, but that's okay. You want the side that's flat to go through the bottom. Kind of went off screen there for a second. Sorry about that. And then you're going to fold the other flap on top and you can see that pushed down quite easy. And then fold the bottom up and then grab the top and screw it on. You might be able to hand tighten it all the way down, but I'll kind of get it on as tight as I can with my fingers. And then I grab my screwdriver and I kind of tighten it in the back. It's got a real small Phillips head um, not slots in the back, so you can tighten that down. Then for the top, what we're going to do is we're going to take our X-Acto knife and we're just going to add a slit. That hole's not big enough to go around that. Now, if you had a crop -a dial, you might be able to cut a larger hole that'll fit over that, um, that button there, but mine doesn't. So I just cut a little slot. You can see that there. Then when I fold it over, it just pushes right on over. And there we go. We have our business card envelope. This particular faux vinyl is really soft, feels really good, really nice texture. I really like this. Definitely want to get some more so I can make some more projects.
All right, so now we're going to use the the black. I, I'm not sure what they're calling this one. It's kind of like a filigree pattern. It's a lot of fun. Again, putting it on the mat, we're going to grab the brayer and push it down. This just keeps it from possibly coming loose. Just going to go over that. You don't have to give it too much force. Just kind of roll it over there with a little bit of pressure. And then we're going to load her in the machine. Okay, we're back at the computer, and here's another envelope shape that I've made. And you can see this one's a little bit different. You can size it to any size you want. This area here is what the size of your finished piece is going to be. So you can adjust that. You can use the grid to kind of count off your inches to see how big it is. Um, and again, make it any size you want. And we're going to go over to Send. And we've got our settings in there from before. Make sure everything's set right. Make sure you're on cut. Type in our force passes are all set and send. So we're going to get this cut. We'll go back to the machine, unload it. I'm not going to make you watch it cut again. And it should peel right off. Perfect. One thing I really like about these vinyls is they all seem to cut at the same setting, but again, do your test cuts if you're not sure. So we're gonna put this together just like the other one. We're gonna fold our sides down. And because this one is a little bit bigger, uh, I am going to kind of push the sides down more. If you have a bone folder, you could use that. I'm going to grab my mat, and I'm just going to use the smooth edge of my X-Acto. And this is the craft knife from 651vinyl.com. I will also put a link to that down at the bottom. The little mat is from We Are Memory Keepers. And we're going to fold up from the bottom. Make sure everything's in line. And let's just press that down again with the back end of that X-Acto knife. This just helps it kind of keep its shape, makes it look a little more tailored. I'm going to clip those corners down. If you had bigger binder clips, it might work a little better. I just have these little ones. And then, as before, we're going to fold the top down. And kind of burnish that edge. So, again, we're going to get our punch. And we're going to pick a spot. Now, don't do what I did here. And I didn't really test where my punch on the top well, was going to line up with the pieces on the bottom. Um, they were kind of hidden and I wasn't looking. Luckily, I did stay within the limits of the bottom, but you could fold the side flaps in on top of the bottom flap for the purpose of determining where you want your hole. But you can see I kind of got in here and got a little worried. And I'm going to throw some more binder clips on there just because I don't want those pieces to spread out. I don't want them to keep their shape. You know, when I get my hand in there, if they push out, the holes aren't going to be in the right spot. So I'm getting my punch in there, and I just want to confirm that my punch is going to go through all three layers because we do want that button to hold them all together. It's not going through all the layers. It's not going to hold your pouch together. So we're going to punch. I like to twist, make sure it really gets in there. You can kind of feel it move up and down that little pin. So we're all the way through. We take off those binder clips. And I haven't had an issue with the binder clips leaving any marks. But do pay attention. Make sure that you're not denting up your faux leather. I'm going to grab a black button for this one. And again, just like before, we're going to kind of push it through that hole, and it just punches right through. Put the other flap right on top of that one. And then our bottom flap's going to come up and go over that. Grab our screw. And again, you might be able to hand tighten yours all the way. Can't get that screwdriver in there. 
and you don't want to over tighten it. Sometimes when you over tighten it, it can twist your faux vinyl a little bit and then it's going to get your panels out of whack. So you can see that here. So I go in and I loosen it up just a little bit so that I can adjust those side flaps so it'll lay flat. And then for that top hole, again, we are going to grab our X-Acto knife and cut the little slit. I'm doing a little slit on top and a little slit on bottom of the hole. You don't want to get that too close to the edge because you can tear it if it's too close to the edge. But there you have it. I think that black button looks really good with this. I just love this faux vinyl. It's so pretty. It's black inside. I have tested the faux vinyl on the inside with heat transfer vinyl. I think it'd be really cool to add a pattern to the inside of the pouch with HTV. And I just used a mini easy press and it worked really well, but you could add a pop of color to the inside or a name or something like that. So again, here's the two we just made. And then the ones from earlier, the black and the blue are the same file, just different sizes. And then the pink and the brown are the same file and the same size. And so just to kind of refresh what we have here, again, these are not all the colors. There are 24 colors available at release. And I just have a few, but there's the brown leather, the blue and the pink pearl. The stars kind of look like metal, really neat texture. And then the holographic, which is absolutely amazing. And of course the black filigree, which I think that one might be my favorite. So just to refresh the things that we used, we used our brayer, and again I'll put links down below for everything. We used a punch, we had our binder clips that we used, our craft knife, we used a screwdriver, and I used my stab and grab tweezers for my test cuts, and of course the buttons. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell to be notified of new videos. Also, give me a like and leave me a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks, guys.